Hi guys, I'm Tim, this is Bridges, and we're from Sin 1700, and we're here at Face the Music, joined by Zanro. Thanks very much for coming Hi down. Hi guys, thanks for having me. No, no worries. worries, thanks for coming in. So it's, it feels weird for me, because um, I listen to you like, almost every day on your show, I love your show. Oh, thank you. And it's just weird, because I feel like I know you, but now I'm finally meeting you, so <laughs> yeah, it's lovely to meet you. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually the best compliment that uh, I can get from someone, if they feel like they're meeting a friend, that means I'm, I'm doing my job well, so yeah. thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet the friend that I never met before. Yes, yes, perfect. <laughs> Um, so we'll start off, um, so last night, obviously, Triple J Awards, uh, how did that go down? So It was really fun. Yeah. I mean, it was a beautiful day in Melbourne. It was a balmy 30 degrees and mm. perfect weather for the big beer garden and music yeah. industry do love drinking beers. Uh, <laughs> so it was great. But it was also, um, you know, again, just such a strong year for Australian music. So uh, I guess the chance for us to take a moment to, you know, recognise a handful of the artists that we really rated and the listeners really loved as well yeah. um, and still celebrate the album format, you know. It's kind of something that is not necessarily... Um, given much of a celebration these days yeah. but we still really uh, prize it at Triple J and there were some great records this year so it was awesome to uh, congratulate DD Dumbo um, on his yeah. beautiful debut album so and uh, and all the nominees there were really you know excited about being there and, and mm -hmm. being nominated and it was a great field again who was your pick um oh you want to know who I voted for yeah, yeah. I voted for DD Oh, yeah. It was such a great album. Um, I yeah. really enjoyed it too, but yeah, hard to pick, I guess. Yeah, Big Scary was another great album that I really loved. I mean, they're just uh, one of those bands that um, they just do such so many different interesting things with their music and, and their live show as well. They just continually change what they do. So yeah, it's um, it was again, you know, it's always a tough decision because. Uh, different albums are, are great for different reasons. It's kind of hard to compare albums that are a very different genre, but you got to make that call, and, and DD was the winner this year. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> so you're moving into um, television as well, into visual realm. How yeah, a little bit. Yeah, how does it feel about getting your face on television, <laughs> having people like see you rather than just hear your voice? Oh, I don't know. How do you guys find it? Do you like it? Oh, like we don't do radio. So. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Well, yeah, we yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're very different fields. Yeah. And I think that um, I first started doing television a few years ago when we had uh, JTV, which was a program on the ABC pretty much of Triple J presenters. And it was strange because all the TV people basically, you know, turned up and and it said oh you're all presenters you can just go on television it's the same thing and it's completely it's different not, yeah. you know when I do radio as you can probably see now my eyes are darting everywhere I'm reading I'm sort of you know completely like ADHD kid you know looking all over the place um but television you know there's nowhere to hide um this you know you certainly uh, can't turn up looking scruffy and, and be on television so it's taken a few years doing that um doing you know a spot on ABC News Breakfast every Wednesday morning um and then doing more music interviews for the mix but it's really fun as well because you know the the sort of music that I cover on Triple J is Triple J music but then I you know I also like a whole bunch of other styles of music that I can explore with my music interviews on the mix and also just have really special uh, moments like getting you know an artist like Gillian Welch who I've loved my whole life you know sing a song to me in a tiny room you know and yeah. obviously it's f singing a song for everyone yeah, but yeah. Yeah, there's there's been some really special moments. So um, it's fun. It's fun to try new things, and it's something that I always want to do in my life. You know, throw myself into uncomfortable situations and yeah, yeah work hard at it until they get comfortable, and then move on to the next thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, so how do you think? Community radio, because you started there mm. in Melbourne, um, Sin, right? With us. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when it was SRA, before yeah, exactly. it was Sin. Yeah, exactly. Little baby, little baby tadpole radio <laughs> yeah. station. <laughs> so how do you think it, it's changed from when you started to um, now and, and for the youth and how it's like the culture? Uh, well, I've got to say, I mean, without Sin FM, we wouldn't have fully formed incredible media makers mm. at the age of 18. I mean, I see some of the people that are coming in through Triple J who have come from Sin FM, um, are just in amazingly talented and so skilled. And I'm just like, I did not sound like that when I was 18 on the radio, you know. It's yeah. because they've had the chance to, uh, you know, get comfortable with that and, and learn how to communicate and, and, and refine what they do, you know, learn the craft, some of them from the age of 12, as you know. So that's been the biggest, I guess, gift to media in Australia. There's nothing else like that in the world. Um, it's so special. In terms of an organisation, I was visiting Sin this week, the first time I've been there in, in quite a while. Um, and just meeting all the people involved, it just seems again to be an organisation that just wants to keep growing and growing with, you know, the digital output and getting stories from all over Australia and just 
that that hunger to to keep expanding but expanding with the best of intentions you know of trying to get as many people through the doors uh and not only getting experience but also having a great time you know for me personally the friends that i made at, at sra and sin fm are still my friends today like lifelong friends uh people that i work with now a lot of people who came through that station as anyone who's you know goes through the alumni list knows have gone on to great jobs in media you know without sin i wouldn't be sitting here today it's absolutely true like I there, there, there would not be any Zanro on TV radio or doing what I love without without yeah. CNFM that's so awesome wow yeah that's crazy that's true yeah it's awesome um so you are at Face the Music doing a keynote mm. with good old Miff Warhurst mm. how does it feel to have a, such a close friend chatting to you but also within the industry that can support you as well yeah, I mean, Miff and I have yeah been you know our close friends and have been close friends for a long time. Um, and I started working with her when I first started working at Triple J in Melbourne. Um, that's where we first got to know each other. And yeah, it's funny because our, our paths um, have had you know a, I guess we've had a similar story in in many ways. Um, I am worried that she's going to stitch me up today. I don't yeah, know. I'm waiting, like <laughs> I'm waiting for a this is your life moment where she brings yeah. out someone from my past. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that the you know the beauty of that is that she can kind of uh, both see things from my perspective but she doesn't know the full story you know she sort of knows the part of my life that began with triple j but uh even me going back into you know to remind myself i've got a scrapbook because i'm a dork uh, of all my early radio experiences you know the first program grids and stuff like that little uh, a newsletter where i'm pitching to be the co-production manager um, at SRA in the first year of it, you know, when it became CineFM and it had a full-time licence, all that stuff. But it just reminded me of how many other things were going on before Triple J began. And Triple J has kind of been my story and my career for the last decade, but it's... I was, do, I was sort of doing this muddled five things at once before that and having the best time ever, you know. So Miff doesn't know any of that story. So I think that, you know, it'll be um, – hopefully it'll be interesting to her and, and more importantly, hopefully it'll be interesting to the room yeah. and she might stitch me up as well. So <laughs> could, could Let, get a few laughs. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's <laughs> hope. <laughs> oh, God. I'm already nervous enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so also you, I see you have a passion for writing and recently um, helped with the book. Yeah. Um, called Better Than Sex. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about that and like, yeah. where you want to go with your writing as well? Yeah, well, I mean, funnily enough, the I, I spent my whole life wanting to be a writer and I didn't actually get, you know, I interested and involved in radio until I literally accompanied a friend to a test broadcast. He was, I was hanging out with him, went to his show and sat in the corner of the room and went, this looks fun, and then just kept coming back. So when I say that Sin FM is where it begins that's because I you know if I hadn't gone along that night I don't know what would have happened yeah. but I did always have a passion for writing and I've written um through the years for mo mo mostly on music and in for music publications and music criticism mm -hmm. um but yeah I did this story uh earlier this year for this anthology basically talking about love sex and dating in the digital age uh and my boyfriend I met through online dating which is something that I've never done before so I told that story <laughs> and it was kind of daunting because I really I just sort of spend most of my public life talking about other people's things, other people's music, other people's lives, mm. other people's passions. And here I was telling something that was incredibly intimate. Like I didn't really tell anyone that we'd been – that we'd met on online dating until years into our relationship. And here I was writing about it in this book. Um, but I really loved it and it really – yeah, it's it sparked – that feeling again that I used to feel of just being compelled to write where I would literally just be sitting down and have sentences churning and one sentence just fill in, you know, a whole short story. So I think I want to, you know, find some time to, to do that again because I really, I really love writing and it's fun to, again, kind of indulgent, but it's fun to sort of turn back inward and write about things that are just, you know, me again. I haven't done that in a long time. So I don't know. Maybe there'll be a memoir. I don't know if anybody wants to read my memoir, memoir. but maybe I'll just write it and see. Memoirs maybe I'll just do Zan. it for fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, memoirs with Zan is good. Very good. Um, I think that's all we've got time for today. But thank you so much for talking to us. At Pleasure. Face the music. Lovely yeah. to meet you both. Yeah. And um, you. yeah, onward and upward. You should get into radio presenting. See how it feels. Uh, yes. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, guys. Thank you.